Hey viewers, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So this is another video from the Strivers A to Z DSA course. Just in case you're for the first time here, this is the world's most in-depth course in DS Algo. Why do I say that? This course has 456 modules. By the end of the course, you would have solved more than 400 plus problems in DS Algo. And you can go across the entire internet. You can buy any of the paid courses. None of them will be covering DS Algo in such depth. So one thing that I can assure you is, once you complete the entire course, you can actually clear any of the DS Algo rounds in any of the companies in any part of the world. So till now we have covered uh, till certain arrays of certain array of zeros, ones, and twos. Now in this video, I'll be covering majority element. So what does the problem majority element states? It states that you'll be given an array of integers. Now your task is to find me the element that appears more than n by two times. Very important lining. More than n by two not equal to n by 2. It has to be more than n by 2. Imagine n is 8, then it should appear more than 4 times. Imagine n is 9. In that case, 9 by 2, we will take the floor value. It is 4. So it should appear more than 4 times. Got it? So, in this array, if I ask you, which is the majority element? How many, like what's the length of the array? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 is the length of the array. Can I say 2 appears for 4 times? which is greater than n by 2. So 4 over here is your answer. And this is what you have to tell me. Given an array, tell me the element that appears more than n by 2 times. So what will be the brute force solution to this particular problem? It's going to be very simple. I'll pick up an element and then I'll scan through the entire array. Basically do a searching through the entire array. And I'll count plus plus. And if at the end of the day, the count appears to be greater than n by 2 for any of the element. That is my answer. First, I'll pick up 2. Next, I'll pick up 2. Next, I'll pick up 3 and scan through the entire array. Next, I'll pick up 3 and scan through the entire array. This is what the brute force solution will be. And the code will look something like this. So it's very simple. You just iterate through the entire array. For the first time, pick up 2 and scan through the entire array. And keep a check and count. After you have scanned through the entire array by taking array of i, you check if the count is greater than n by 2. If it is, then you return array of i. And for like, out of the for loop, you can return minus 1 just in case there is no majority element. So this is how the brute force solution will look like. What will be the time complexity? Obviously, we are using a couple of loops. So it is b go of n square. And when you give the solution to the interviewer, the interviewer will not be happy. And it will ask you to optimize it. This is when you will be giving the better solution. So what will be the better solution? The brute is taking n square. So we know one thing for sure, the better solution will be somewhere of the order n log n or b go of n or 2n, but it is definitely going to be better than n, n square. So if I have to think, what are we actually doing? We are counting, we are counting, and we are looking for which element appears more than n by two times. So yes, yes, we can use hashing. It's very simple. If there is a count, we have to keep a track of how many times it occurs. The only technique that comes up to, to my mind is hashing. That is what I will be doing. So what I'll do is, I will declare a hash map with the element and the count, where the element is my key and the count is my value. So this will be the representation in the map for a key and value. Now what I'll do is, I'll be like, let's scan through the array. It is 2. So I'll put that 2 and I'll probably tell him you occur once. Then I'll move and then I'll say you occur twice. Then I'll move and there's a 3. I'll say it occurs once. Then I'll move and there's a 3. It occurs twice. Then I'll move 1 occurs once. Then I'll move 2 occurs thrice. Then I'll move 2 occurs 4 times. So once you have completed the entire iteration, now it's time to iterate in the map. Yes, it's time to iterate in the map. So if I iterate in the map, you will see that this particular guy 2 occurs 4 times, which is greater than n by 2, which is 3. So 2 is your answer. So just iterate in the map and see which element is occurring more than n by 2 times. So let's quickly quote the better solution of the problem link will be in the description. So we need a map to keep the count. So I'll declare a map. Okay, what is the next thing? We have to iterate. So let's quickly iterate. And now once I'm iterating, I'll say map, what's the element? V of i, do a plus plus. So with this iteration, 
I will be marking it in the map. Now, what is the next job? Iterate in the map and see which is more than n by two times. So this is how you iterate in the map in C++, the Java code and the Python code is in the description. And now you say id.second because that is the value is greater than, are you greater than v dot size y2? If you are, then you have the majority element. And you know the key is very simple, it's at the first place. So the key will be the first place. If after this, there was no one, you can simply say return minus one. And now we will quickly go and run this off and see if it is running fine. Okay, looks like it is not, why is it not? App was not declared. Let's quickly go and declare hash include. Everything is running absolutely fine now. So what about the time complexity? Can I say the first loop is running for we go of n and there's an ordered map used, which is which is going to take logarithmic of n. If you use something like unordered map, then this logarithmic of n will go off only in case of average and best case. In case of worst case, unordered map ends up taking we go of n time within itself. So that is an n login. And what is, how many elements are there in the map? Imagine you're given an array, something like this. Then each of these elements will be in the map. So thereby, at the worst case, the map might end up taking n. So what is the total time complexity? Can I say it is b go of n log n, again, depending on which map you're using, and a b go of n to traverse in the map. And what is the space complexity? b go of n because you're storing all the elements in a map data structure. So this will only happen if the array contains all unique elements Remember this. So the moment you give this hashing solution to the interviewer, he'll be like, hey, wait, you are using an additional space complexity. Can we please optimize this? That's when you'll be talking about the most optimal algorithm. And that will be using something as the most voting algorithm. Now sitting in an interview, you cannot invent this algorithm. So you have to know this algorithm beforehand. So you might be thinking, but does that mean we have to mark it up? No, the interviewer will be grilling you on thought process and intuition. If you mug up the algorithm and you just present it line by line, you'll understand that you have mugged up the algorithm. So please make sure you understand the thought process, intuition and the algorithm in depth. So please make sure you watch the video till the end because you're going to take away a lot of things when the video ends. So how will I be explaining this particular algorithm? What I'll do is, I'll do a dry run of the algorithm. And during the dry run, I'll be sharing the thought process and the intuition behind every step that this algorithm does so that it sticks to your mind, okay? So what is the algorithm all about? It's very simple. It's about two variables, element and thought. Initially count is zero. And you can say initially the element is not initialized. And we start iterating. So whenever we are iterating and we have the first element or whatever, if the count is zero, that means we haven't taken any array. Please hear this out properly. We still haven't taken any array. So you will be like, okay, I will take seven and I'll increase the count to one. So what I did was I said, I will consider this seven to be my answer. I'm just taking a hypothetical assumption that seven is my answer and the count is one. And now let's start moving. We again move to seven, like seven. Now this occurs twice. Five. No, it is not seven. So you reduce the count. Remember, this count is not storing how many times 7 appears. It doesn't. It has some other significance, which I'll see. Next, again 7. Increase. Next, again 5. Decrease. Next, 1. Decrease. So whenever you find 7, you increase. Because 7 was your element. Whenever you find anything apart from 7, you decrease. Now, you are reaching 0. Until how much? Till this portion. Let's understand what happened. So if you take seven, seven, five, seven, five, one, this is an array. Rather, this is an array. And the count over here is zero. What does the count signify? So you took the element seven. How many times does it appear? Three times. How many times the other elements appears? Where other includes five and one. The other element appears three times. This is the reason when there was a seven, you did a plus plus. So there were three plus 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 done. And when there was five, five, one, there was a minus, minus, minus done. So three plus, three minus ended up giving you a count of zero. Can I say something for sure? If I just consider this array, just consider this array, seven is definitely not my majority element. Why? 
if seven was my majority element, how can you cancel? Because for if an element appears more than n by two times, there is only one element which appears more than n by two times, and you cannot cancel it off. If there are six elements and seven appears four times, can you cancel four? To cancel four, you need four more. So it's not possible. Since seven appeared three times in a six length array, which is not greater than n by two, it is equal to equal to n by two. So it got cancelled. So something that I can assuredly say is, till here seven is not my majority element. Till here it's not. So this cannot be considered as an answer. But what I will do is I'll move ahead, and I'll move to five. Okay. The moment I move to five, I find count is zero. So what I'll do is I will just quickly say, okay, listen, count is zero. So can you please take this as my new majority element? And probably I'll start checking from here, and my count will be one. Perfect. So I will take five. I'll make the count one. Let's move seven. It's not equivalent. So I'll just make it zero. I just make it back zero. So this time the array finishes here, and the count becomes zero again. Eminent. If I just take this particular array, can five be the majority? No. That's why. Next we'll move ahead. The moment we move ahead, what will happen? Since count is zero, it will again initialize count to one an element to be five, and we will start the array again from here. And this time again, let's move. It's five increment. It is seven decrement. It is seven decrement. So can I say in this particular array what happened? Five, five, seven, seven. What I can say is, hey, five was occurring twice. Seven was occurring twice. So it got cancelled. Thereby count was zero. Thereby five also cannot be my answer. So till now, whoever I have considered. As a majority got cancelled by similar elements, so till now no one has dominated. We are still looking for someone who is dominating. Got it? Everyone has still now cancelled. Let's go ahead. What is the count value? Count value is zero now. So let's move ahead. We are at a count zero. So again we start. So count will again become one, and this element still stays as five. This time we'll move ahead. Count becomes two. This time we'll move ahead. Count becomes three. This time we'll move ahead. Count becomes four. And we can say we have ended the iteration. We have ended the iteration. So since we have ended the iteration, there is an element five. This count has no significance, but we have an element five. This element five will be our majority element if there exists a majority element. Why? Because everyone else got cancelled off within itself. So if there is someone still remaining who did not got cancelled, then that is my answer. But am I sure that element five is the majority element? What I said. If there exists a majority element, it will be five and no one else. If 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 there is a majority element, it will be five and no one else. If there doesn't, then okay, fine. For an example, if the last portion was something like one one one, in that case you would have got one, and the count would have been four. But is one the majority element? If you see, one just appears four times, maybe five. That's it. One appears five times, and when you look at the length of the array, it is six two. Four and four, which is eight plus four, twelve. It's a sixteen length array. Someone has to appear more than eight times to be majority. And since it was five, let's see five is. So let's see how many times five appears. Once, twice, thrice, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Five appears nine times. Out of which four times were not cancelled. Four times were not cancelled. But the other times it was cancelled. So the other five times it was cancelled. Got it. So I can say five is my majority element. It's a very simple process. The first process is to apply Moore's voting algo. Okay. What is the second process? Verify if the element that you got, the element that you got, is the majority or not. How do you do it? Whatever the element is. So in this case, the element was five. Just iterate through the array again and see how many times five appears. This time it will come out to be nine, which is greater than the length sixteen by two. So that's why the five is. If it doesn't, then it is not. Got it? So I hope you've understood the intuition. It's very simple. If someone appears more than n by two times, it will not get cancelled. Quite simple, right? That's the intuition. So coming back to the code editor again, the problem link will be in the description. So what do we need? We need a count zero, and we can keep an element normally. And now let's quickly start off with zero. And probably v dot size, yes, perfect. And now can I say 
First thing that I will check is what if the count is zero? If the count is zero, I know for sure. This is where I'm starting a check for a new section. So count will be one and the element will be V of I, right? But what if the count is not zero? In that case, I will check if V of I is equal to equal to the element that I was thinking it's is the majority. If it is, please increase. If it is not, okay, let's reduce. Simple, three lines. If the count is zero, we just assign and we move I plus plus. If it is equ equivalent, we just increase count and we move. If it is not, then we decrease and then we move. So what will happen is when you're decreasing, if the count becomes zero, when you increase and when you come back, the count will be checked with zero and it will be replaced with the new element and it will start a new section. Quite simple. And once you've got the element, just iterate over here and v dot size and i plus plus and you say hey listen if v of i is equivalent to element probably you can keep something like counter one equal to zero and you can say counter one plus plus if at the end of the day counter one is greater than v dot size by two again you can store v dot size in some variable this particular element is the answer or else you can say the answer is minus one or whatever they are asking you to return. So what I'll do is now I'll quickly go and run this off and see if it is running fine. No, it does, but it'll be counter one plus plus. Counter one done and let's quickly submit this off. I hope it will run. It does run. Now remember one thing, whatever is the value of counter at the end, it doesn't represents anything. So we have to talk about the time complexity. How much? A single loop. And three fell, so it's a single loop. So whenever it's a single loop, you know the time complexity is very simple. It's B go of N for the first iteration of the Moore's voting algo. And if they are stating that the, the array might have or might not have a majority element, then you go and verify. This step will not be done if the problem states that there always exists a majority element. Then this step will never be done. Okay, you only do this step if the, prop, if the array might not have a majority element. Got it? So this will be the time complexity and we are not using any extra space. So this will be the space complexity of the most optimal solution. Coming back to the sheet, I can say that this particular problem is done. And if you've understood everything, please, please do hit that like button. It's just one like, it won't cost you anything. Please do consider hitting that like button. And to continue your tradition, do comment understood so that I understand that you're understanding everything. And if you're new to our channel, please, please do consider subscribing to us because it's like 1.23 a.m. in the morning. And after my office hours, I'm recording this video. So if you if you consider subscribing to me, that will uh, motivate me to make such more videos. And here with this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's finish some other video. Then bye, bye, take care.